Hello, it's the Sinister Gambino here with a new video. And in this video, I'm going to be doing my part 2 for the Premium Deluxe Reaper Work episode of Contact Mission Content. So, starting off, the first mission for this part is the last mission that was released on May 2nd, 2019 during Drifade for the Arena War DLC. Because for those who do not know, the, like, different missions were released in, like, three different parts and stuff. Which is the only set of contact missions, I believe, that kind of worked that way, at least for the current, like, latest rendition of Grand Theft Auto Online, of course. But, yeah. First one on here is RV Nearly There, which requires stealing a brigade. And before going in further... For those who are interested in the, like, maximum money with a single player, I'm pretty sure it's $23,100. But if you want more details on, like, the money you can make and stuff, I'd refer to part one, because I have a, like, I have a, like, image for, like, the first minute of the first part that goes in full details, kind of, about the way that the newer contact missions in the game pay out. But with all that out of the way... I'll start talking about RV new there, but yeah. First interesting thing I'd say with this mission is that the time for the mission is always 12 o'clock, aka noon, which is very good if you're going for very particular, like, pre-modified vehicles that spawn throughout the city. It's only that spawn around that time, it's a really good mission to do if you want to stockpile, like, a garage worth of them or something like that. So that can be sold for really easy cash, in a sense. But yeah. So doing a brigade, you just go to like the location and then there's a group of enemies you have to kill, of course. And for some reason, Simeon puts a lot of emphasis on like automatic weaponry. I'm not really sure if automatic weaponry is a rare site for contact missions, but... Really, it's kind of just it's difficult for this first section as a lot of the other contact missions in the game. I don't really feel it's all that difficult, even though that text can give that impression. Though once going into the brigade, it gets a lot more difficult in my opinion, or even just in the process of getting the brigade out of here. I will warn that the strategy I use for this mission is more of a like, pro, more like an advanced kind of strat kind of have to be really careful, and maybe even kind of lucky not to damage the brigade very significantly. The strategy I'm using in this will probably result in at least half of the health being gone, but yeah, I'd rather do that than having to like, move all the different RVs, especially doing it solo. So this is a mission I probably recommend doing with at least a single friend, because it can be really annoying if you want to do it for the legitimate method. It's not that this method's obviously legitimate or anything, it's just a, like, faster way of doing it. But yeah. Here I think I actually made a mistake here. I believe I could have actually went away from the wreckages before going into Brickade, and so I didn't have to deal with enemies after the fact. Like, even before going to the destination. But yeah, as you can see, you're probably going to have, like, half damage no matter how you do the more, like, pro-advanced strat that I did there. And I actually had, like, only, like, one health left, kind of, so if I got hit by, like, one more bullet, I probably would have failed. I think I had, bad, I think I had better runs on this particular mission before. So it's definitely possible to have more than just the very tiniest bit. Regardless, I think this is definitely the most efficient way of doing it in a timely manner, because it's better to do missions in a timely manner than to kind of stall out on them and all that stuff. Which, again, more details on part one. But yeah. Once destroying all the like RVs, if you do the more like pro-advanced strat, at least that's how I'm going to call it, you want to kind of go to like the airstrip. When going there, of course, you can actually kill, like, the people that spawn there for, like, more RP and stuff like that. But as long as you're, like, at the airstrip, I think it should be enough distance for the vehicles to despawn. So the actual, like, best method, at least with the advanced strat, is to, like, go far enough away from the wreckages. 
set up the vehicles despawn so it does take advantage of a little game mechanic. And then after that you just go into Brigade, go to like the destination like normal even if you didn't use like the advanced strat. But yeah, kinda recommend going off road, like off the roads I believe cause there's actually vehicles that spawn like on the typical path that you'll be going. And yeah, I believe eventually when you get to like the highway kind of areas by like the city, I believe the vehicles then despawn. But yeah, before I go on to the next clip, I'll see if there's any fun fact, trivia, kind of stuff like that. First one apparently is despite Simeon saying that the, the dealerships in Sandy Shores is actually apparently in harmony. If you know the description in in game like text, say it's in Sandy Shores, it's apparently a Harmony dealership. And the mission's name is also a play on the phrase, are we nearly there? And also those remind me of some very particular movie. Also, I probably did a kind of bad job, like, trying to go off road and stuff, but yeah, as you can see on the roads, they will actually, like, spun in the way and stuff. So I do recommend going off road while also being very careful. Again, I probably had way better runs in, of this in the past, but this was just the footage I ended up getting for this particular video and all. On to the next mission here, we have Burn Ray, which was released on May 9th, 2019, which was like the third and final day of Premium Deluxe Reaper Work missions being released, along with one other mission, which obviously will be after this. But yeah, Burn Ray is a mission where you have to like extinguish a bunch of vehicles, and as far as I recall, the only vehicle that has like extinguishers on it with the hoses and all that obviously that can be spawned like right next to your character would actually be the rcv so rcv is definitely the number one top tier vehicle i'd say to use for this i always send me in text about like fire truck locations for this particular mission plus 
Out of the Diamond Casino heist update, I believe you can actually get the fire truck as a Pegasus vehicle now, but even then, you can't spawn it right next to you, I'm pretty sure, obviously, as it's a Pegasus vehicle. So even stoned RCV is definitely the best bet. It always was the top tier vehicle, I'd say, for this specific mission. In fact, it's probably only like player versus enemy situation, I feel, where the RCV is actually all that useful, technically. <laughs> or if there is more good PvE uses for the RCV, this is probably the most useful the RCV will ever be, to be completely honest. So yeah, at least this vehicle gets a use in some way, shape, or form, for sure, with this particular mission. But yeah, apparently the amount of burning vehicles is like 15 to 24. I don't know if more or less necessarily get added. Like if you have like more players, more players might mean more vehicles for all I know though. And then another thing is apparently this mission also has a time of day of noon. So again, good for getting very particular like pre-modified vehicles if you want to like make a garage full of them to sell for like cash and stuff. But yeah. Honestly, I just recommend using the RCVs like hose. Obviously, you can do this solo, but you only have access to one hose anyway. So I guess technically, if you're doing a solo, a fire truck can be kind of just as good. But still, I do recommend using RCV as it can just spawn it on foot rather than to go to like a fire truck with a Pegasus spawn or from like the actual mission itself. Also, thinking about it, calling 911 with the emergency services number or whatever in the game, even that I don't feel would be as fast obviously as just spawning RCV from on foot. So tackling that's probably the best option, just using the emergency services contact obviously on the phone of course. But yeah, definitely pays off to have an RCV for this particular mission if you want to do it as fast as possible I'd say. Also, I think the RCV is slight, like bullet resistance, so that also would help. Something like that, I'd imagine. But yeah. For those who want to know like what the vehicles are that are distinguished, apparently they are actually a couple like DLC vehicles that aren't in typical Rockstar created contact missions. And those are like Tempestas and then Tauruses for the like burnt vehicles and all that. And yes, the vehicles actually do apparently depend on the amount of players, so yeah, anywhere from 15 to 24, I'd imagine, obviously the low end for the lesser amount of players, of course.
Finally, onto the final Simeon's Premium Deluxe Reaper Work Missions. We have Simeon Nomics, which is a like nighttime mission. It's actually locked to 21 o'clock, apparently, as shown on the film there. Never changes from that time, so again, could be very good for very particular, like, pre modified vehicles in the game that sell for more than the average vehicle in this game. But yeah. You'll have to steal around like two to four vehicles, and again, like most missions, it depends on your amount of like players for how many vehicles you have to steal. But yeah, there's kind of two ways you can do this mission. You can do this mission stealth, or obviously there's not stealth as well. Obviously, I recommend doing this mission as stealth as possible. I think that's why I brought the armored Kuruma, just in case that were to accidentally break the stealth. But I do not think I broke the stealth whatsoever. So that's obviously very good. And I believe the stealth is as good as like the dispatch services stealth. So like I think you can do like body shots as long as it's done stealth. So even if you're using like a sniper rifle, you don't really have to like aim for the heads or anything, because the stealth's not good for the stealth mechanics in this and the dispatch services especially, I think. But yeah, I used the thermal helmet to try and see the bodies better, obviously. So that could obviously be something that helps for sure. Not really that's necessary, but I definitely think it could be nice. Make sure that like certain enemies aren't beyond like buildings and stuff like that. But yeah, as for the vehicles... The vehicles that you have to steal are a Tyrant and a Nero Custom. So those are like the two like DLC vehicles that appear in this mission that don't typically appear in contact missions. And if you play with three and four players, it's apparently just another Tyrant and another Nero Custom, so they don't like add any like different types of vehicles to steal. But yeah. With groups of two, by the way, for stealth, I recommend using like an advanced rifle, something that can like kill the enemies very fast. As long as you shoot them like one after the other, you should be able to deal with groups of two even solo very fine. Also, something worth mentioning, I believe like the cargo plane can be moved around, so I think you can have like a closer location. If I remember right, I think I had the furthest away location with the cargo plane. But obviously that's okay, it lets me show off more of the like, stealth, because obviously if your location is closer to the starting point, at least where I started, then you really won't have to go through as much of the enemies, so that could be nice. But yeah. Apparently if you don't do this stealth, you'll actually get a 3 star wanted level for those who are curious. Personally, I'm pretty sure I did this whole entire thing on stealth. So I don't think I got a single one on level whatsoever. But yeah, I think I brought the armored Kuruma just in case I would break stealth, but yeah. If you're confident you're not gonna break stealth, the fastest like point A to point B vehicle of travel that you have can probably be a very good choice. I can impress a mark two, stuff like that. So yeah, point A to point B travel could be a good thing to prioritize for your vehicle choice if you don't think you're gonna break stealth. But yeah, as for that, the mission's very simple. I don't think any of the stealth on screen is honestly very hard. Just pay attention to how like, shoot the enemies and stuff, especially with the two people right next to each other. Just simply use like an advanced rifle. And this mission should be very good to go. And by the way, for the previous mission, I don't think I mentioned it. But also for this mission, there is no like fun fact trivia kind of stuff. Only the first one of this video are we RV New Adair, I found like some fun fact trivia kind of stuff. But yeah. As for these missions, what do I think of the like premium deluxe reaper work missions? Well, they use the updated contact mission payout that like the dispatch services do. But it doesn't force two players, so you kinda get less payout than you do on dispatch services. But obviously for solo players, this set of contact missions is definitely preferable, I'd say, over the dispatch services. 
Assuming the last play, last stand missions, what are from Gerald payout the same as like dispatch and like the premium dog sweep works with like an update like contact mission payout? I would assume it does. Last play might honestly be better. Because a big gimmick with these missions are obviously using like vehicles and stuff. But yeah. Premium Docs Reaper work has a couple of the most like, very annoying missions in this game. I'd say it brought like quite a couple annoying missions. Some of the most annoying missions that this game has ever received, I'd say. But yeah. They're not all really that bad. There's obviously really good ones, so as long as you stick to really good ones, they can be some of the best missions for making money. Obviously, on regular money, I'd probably just stick to Los Santos Connections since someone has like the green crates that pays like 8,000. But whenever these are on double money and like Los Santos Connection are not, the premium Deluxe Reaper works are definitely some of the best missions, definitely, for sure. But, anyways, next set of contact missions I'll be doing actually will be the casino story missions and I'll probably approach those similar to what I did with the Lamar lowrider missions where it will be no commentary so it will be purely text on the screen like I do when I typically mention like the next audio clips whenever I want people to know where the next audio clips at of course I use the text feature so I'll probably be the entirety of the casino story stuff so yes, yeah, similar to lowrider missions, those are like story missions in the game. Yeah, that's most definitely what I'm going to be doing for the next part, since I'm pretty sure those missions come right after this. So yeah, no commentary, just purely texturally for that one. So that will finally be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed.